Welcome to this episode of Encountering Jesus. My name is Cindy Johnston and I'm your host. You are listening to my book, Stairway to Heaven's Door. This book is copyrighted 2023 and all rights are reserved. No part of this book may be reproduced without permission. I hope you enjoy this podcast. Now here's the book. Chapter 2 Being God's Child I have tried to come up with a way to help others know what these divine encounters are like. I think one of the best examples would be Sozo or Theophostic's prayer ministry. If you have gone through this in counseling then you have experienced a divine encounter. I initially began experiencing Jesus in these encounters as I was working through many personal issues and childhood trauma. I had no idea that these were a divine encounter, but I did understand that they were in my imagination. Some of you may have been taught, as I was, that our imaginations are flesh and not to be trusted. We see in scripture that our foolish imaginings can take us away from God and even set up roadblocks to hinder our walk with God. Through scripture we are urged to take all our imaginings and thoughts captive and submit them to Christ. Romans 1 verse 21 and in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. This is biblical and will help to control our errant thoughts especially if we have trauma or other mental and emotional issues that want to rule our life. What I have found through my counseling and these interactive times with Jesus is that our imagination can be used for good. When we fully surrender and guard our imagination it can and will be used by God to transform our hearts and minds. We see in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 12 that we all see the things of heaven and the supernatural realm as through a glass dimly or a reflection as in a mirror. Our imagination is the projector screen of our minds. It is the place that our hearts will send the revelations and insights given to us by the Holy Spirit. Little by little Jesus opened my eyes to this through the course of my life. Then after these encounters began, He taught me more directly and clearly. Here is what I understood. Our heart is the place where the Holy Spirit resides. When our heart is in union with Jesus then it can receive direct revelations from the Holy Spirit. But our minds may not always know or understand this communication heart to heart and spirit to spirit. The heart must then take these spirit-inspired and directed thoughts, ideas, pictures, words, etc. and project them into our imagination. Without other influences the imagination is like a blank picture screen from which our minds can receive from the heart these revelations. Unfortunately, most of us have baggage from our past, issues we are dealing with in the present, and worries of the future. Not only that but we have a lot of things that we have been taught about God that are not correct. With all these things clogging up both the projector in our heart and the screen in our mind our perceptions of the spiritual truths are marred. This is why we see through a glass dimly and just a reflection of what God reveals to us. Here is something interesting to think about. Did you know we see the world upside down? The inverted image we see initially is flipped right side up by our brains. This is a scientific fact. I sometimes wondered if this happened during the fall. Before the fall Adam and Eve saw everything correctly, perfectly. But when the Holy Spirit left them and their spirit man died, they no longer had perfect vision in either realm. The good news is that Jesus has restored what Adam and Eve lost. Through his death on the cross we can have a personal relationship with God. When we are saved there are many things that happen. The most important is the Holy Spirit comes back into our hearts and breathes life back into our dead spirit man. Having the Holy Spirit, God's very own Spirit now fills us and guides us so that we can understand all that we have been given as children of God. 
But most of us have found that though the provision is instant it takes us a lifetime walking out this transformation process as we learn to surrender all of our heart to God. Though we only see a glimpse of this full restoration just know that we do have access to all the things Adam and Eve did in their union with God. That is why we cannot focus on the things of earth and the fallen state of the world. This undermines the truth of what God has done in us. If we see only the things of earth and not the things of heaven then we miss the fuller reality of who we are. In Colossians 3 verses 1 to 4 says, Since, then, you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Part of what the church has missed all these years is the way to be transformed more and more into the reality of who we are in heaven. It is hard to do if we are not experiencing God's kingdom realm. That is why these divine encounters are really important. Here are some scripture passages that will lay out for you God's design in restoring us to a complete and full union with himself. And just to remind you this was the goal all along. That is why Jesus prays for us in John 17 to have this same union with him as he has with his Father. John 1 verses 12 to 13. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. This whole passage from John 1 verses 1 to 13 is amazing, but for time's sake I'm only quoting the verses I'm teaching from. In these two scriptures John makes a point to tell us that being born here on earth was not what makes us children of God. I know for years I always thought we were made in God's image. But God is spirit which means there is no earthly image. No wonder he prohibited his people from making images of him. If there is nothing in the natural that makes us his children then how was Adam and Eve made in his image? Let me take some time to explain this fully. Let's start with how Jesus explains all this in detail to Nicodemus in John 3. This passage begins with an introduction of Nicodemus who was a Pharisee. Just so you know the Jewish leaders of Jesus' day all knew the Torah, God's word, backwards and forwards. But we will see that when Jesus talks about being born again, it leaves the highly educated Nicodemus scratching his head. Here is the passage in John 3 verses 3 to 12. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So, it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? I believe this is the place where most of us get lost though we may not realize it. Initially, we all should recognize what Jesus was talking about when he mentions being born again. It definitely is about salvation. Yet, if that is all we understand then like Nicodemus, we still are not getting the deeper spiritual meanings that reflect the heavenly realm and our access to it. Let me take you back to the part in this passage where Jesus refers to the wind blowing where it pleases. Jesus knew that Nicodemus would know this was referring to what happened just after Adam and Eve ate of the tree in the Garden of Eden. 
Let's take a look at Genesis 3 verses 7 to 11. This is after Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So, they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. So, I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? When Adam and Eve ate of the tree, they died spiritually. The spirit man that was connected to God became dead and unseen. This is when they became children of earth more than children of God. In essence they lost their godlikeness when their spirit died to his spirit. After the fall we see that when God comes into the Garden of Eden the first couple only hear the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the garden. There are two things we need to notice here. First God is spirit and as such he is not seen by our natural eyes. Secondly, God's spirit does make a sound. We see this in Acts 2 verse 2 when the Holy Spirit returns to the earth at Pentecost. This scripture says that the Holy Spirit sounded like the blowing of a violent wind. Going back to what Jesus said when talking with Nicodemus will help bring this all together. Here is what he said, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So, it is with everyone born of the Spirit. When Jesus talked of being born again, he explained that this was the reconnecting of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. First in the garden we see that Adam and Eve lost the Holy Spirit. This caused their spirit man to die thus cutting off their ability to see in the spirit realm. What Jesus is explaining to Nicodemus is that without the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit none of us will have the ability to see heaven, which is a spirit realm and not a natural one. I'd like to restate what I have already said. When we are born again, our dead spirit man is brought to life thus restoring what Adam and Eve lost. Then as we are filled with God's spirit, we come back into the same union that Adam and Eve had with God before the fall. This gives us the ability to see in the spirit, and we have all the same access they had to the heavenly realms and God's kingdom. Remember when Jesus answered Nicodemus he said, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. Looking back as John 1 verse 13 we see it says, Yet to all who did receive him, Jesus, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. It is important that we understand that when God walked in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve he always did so in the Spirit. Until Jesus showed me this I always thought that God showed up as a theophany and manifested his presence in a way that Adam and Eve could see like he did with Abraham. But that wasn't necessary with Adam and Eve because they could see him perfectly as they were one with him in the Spirit. In fact, their sight was so oriented to seeing in the spirit realm they didn't even know they were naked. Jesus talks about this in a different way when speaking to the woman at the well in John 4 verse 24. In that passage he makes it clear that God who is spirit wants his worshippers to worship both in spirit and truth. You see God is spirit and there is nothing of flesh or earth in him or his heavenly kingdom realm. For us to fully be a child of God we must have his spirit. Having his spirit is what restores us to being children of God. This is the part where Jesus was telling Nicodemus you must be born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. Big S gives birth to little s. Being a child of God means that God's spirit breathes life into our dead spirit man and we are born again spiritually. No matter where you are in your walk with Jesus, please pray this prayer. 
There is also a part of this prayer that is for salvation. If you have never prayed for Jesus to be your Savior and to come into your heart then you can do this now. This prayer is to reaffirm that you want to be a citizen of heaven and a child of God over anything here on earth. Dear Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for not putting you first in my life. I ask that you would cleanse me and come into my heart. I want to give you my life so I might live for you only. I want your spirit, the Holy Spirit, God's precious spirit to come and make his place in my heart forever. I want to give the Holy Spirit access to all of me and I hold nothing back from you, Jesus or him. Jesus, I invite you to be my savior and my good shepherd. I invite you to be my Lord and my King now and forevermore. Guide me always with your Holy Spirit restoring and renewing me with your love. I declare that as your word has made clear that I'm a citizen of heaven. I know that your kingdom realm is unseen by my natural eyes, but is always seen in my heart when I am in union with you. I know that the Holy Spirit reveals you and your kingdom right into my heart. Then my heart which is the projector sends these spiritual insights to the projector screen of my imagination. I ask that you would cleanse my imagination and I choose to guard it from this day forward. Show me any place that I am opening myself up to tarring and distorting this precious place of connection. Jesus, you make it abundantly clear that you are the door through which we can enter into heaven. My life is yours 100% and I ask that you help me to walk in your loving ways forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. Whether you are an old Christian or a new one you will need to always stay humble and childlike. This is the key. To simply trust wholeheartedly that the precious Trinity is pure and good and will always make a way for us to come into union with them. I believe it is good for us to see ourselves as small children learning about God's kingdom realm through our young spirit man. I know many of us have been seeing into the spirit realm for years. But I want to challenge you to set aside what you think you know and simply be childlike as you learn to see into the heavenly realms as the Holy Spirit guides you. Remember that these encounters are not like the typical thundery visions many have had. Instead, these divine encounters are like the still small voice. They are unpretentious and are very gentle and sweet. They are more personal and are a way for us to simply experience Jesus personally face to face. I have found that seeing into the kingdom of God is much different than seeing in the spirit here on earth. When Jesus first taught me about this, he took me to Revelation 3 colon 20 4 colon 2. He taught me how to let go of my earthly spiritual sight and to access my heavenly sight by coming up into his heart. We see in Ephesians 1 verse 18 Paul talks about how our heart has eyes. This is where I believe our baby living spirit sees the kingdom in the spirit. We can see in Revelation 3 verse 18 that this seeing in the spirit isn't something some of us naturally access as Christians. In this verse Jesus is offering his eyes salve to help the Laodiceans to see in the spirit. We will talk more about seeing in the spirit in the next chapter as we look at 1 Corinthians chapters 1 and 2 and Exodus 33 verses 7 to 23. Thank you for listening to my podcast. This book, Stairway to Heaven's Door, Book 1, is part of a series. The first book was called Heaven's Door, and the book after this one is Stairway to Heaven's Door, Book 2. And all of these books are on Amazon, so you can purchase them. And they, most of them are on YouTube, so you can listen. All of these books have been written to help you learn how to encounter Jesus. I want to thank you again for listening. Have a great day. Bye now.